How are we doing? Let's just everything's set up a sec. That's working over there. Let's see how I zoom. We're gonna need a little bit more zoom than that, aren't we? there and it's about right let's get the light in the right position Ooh. Hey, hey ahoy shit mate okie dokie I think that's about right for now. Just... So the throughout these weeks to hear me talking, he's been asleep for half an hour. <laughs> okay. He knows. Right. Tonight's offering, guys. I didn't. I picked these up the, yesterday because they wanted me to do a a short video on how to do the spears, which I don't know if you've seen or not. You may have. Um. So I thought I'd paint them tonight. So we've got CF01, which is Carolingian Franks, as it says on the title. Hopefully, no ty typos. Okay, so that was a quick look. So far, I've um, done a Xenophil undercoat with the airbrush using Vallejo black with Vallejo grey over the top. Um, pumice on the base. I thought to speed it up a bit, um, I painted it, painted the pumice because it was dry. Give us some chance of finishing the miniature tonight. That's just um, a watered down oak brown. Okay, so let's get cracking. Let's start with. Uh, let's start with a gate skin. That on the new triads is the one below Barbarian Flesh, I think. I think it's just got a bit more of a, do you know the GW Dwarf one, was it Bugman's Glow? Why is it like that? Evening Rich. Let's put some medium out, which is going to be the next video promised, Rich. I did the drilling video, so I'm going to try and do some more little short ones like that. It's, uh, got a few people asking me to do how to do such and such, how to do such and such. It's a bit like the uh, drilling the, the hands for the spears. It's something I think. You can take for granted because it's it's once you you've done it a few times it just becomes second nature. But it's a confidence thing, and I think you know if you haven't done it before, you don't want to do it wrong. So just maybe just putting it up on video so people see it's not that hard. Um, is a worthwhile exercise. Apparently, uh, Lord S was saying that he gets asked all the time at Griffin Beast how to do the spears, how to do this. So I've just said to him, if anyone asks you anything, let me know. And if it's a something we can do in a quick video, we'll do it. And again, if anyone's watching and they've got any uh, things they want to know, uh, just leave, just message me on 
Facebook and Twitter or leave a message in the comments. Yeah, so these are Carolingian Frank half guard. I know they do two different scarf. I've done ones like this before that have got a cloak. I didn't realise they did them without a cloak as well, they look quite cool. And then instead of the normal spears, these have got the uh, wire spears. Which are really good for stabbing yourself with. Okay, so I've had these, something that I was discussing, well, comments on, would I um, recommend the paints, should, should, should you buy these paints? I, I never like to tell people they should buy something, because if they don't like it, then... <laughs> um, no amount of me saying it's good is going to make it any difference. Um, so I can just tell you what I would do. Am I happy that I've changed over? Yes, I am. Are there paints in the old range that I've not found in this range? Yes, there are. But that's going to happen in any paint range. I don't think uh, that's too much of an issue. I don't know. Uh, yeah. As you can see, these watered, even with a bit of a uh, medium in them, are still got masses and masses of pigment. And the coverage is pretty epic. Um. I think, I don't know if, how many of you have seen some of the photographs I put up on, especially on Facebook, I suppose. I do put them on X as well. And Blue Sky. Um, but I've noticed they take the resolution down as well. So, so I've often wondered why. Sometimes I pay them intro and I think, yeah, that was... Uh, I'm sure it looked better in that when I painted it. And you put it up and uh, the the resolution's been cut down a bit. I don't think it happens all the time on all of them, but... But anyhow, what I was trying to get around to saying, I suppose, is... With the, um, I was going to say dryads, triads. Um, I definitely think my blends have become easier. So I'm doing more of them, which I think is for the thing time I suppose frames you, you're working with is up to the level of paint job you get for the time that you're putting in so on that that alone I think that's worth it does that make sense if that makes sense sometimes sometimes I make sense not all the time so this is just the gunmetal that's the dog snoring. I'm going to snore in the uh, It's like on the uh, little video earlier. Uh, I know some people call them a pin vice and some people call them a drill. Um, it just so happened that I grabbed the army paint one from Griffin Beast and they call it a hobby drill. 
which is totally up to them. It's their product. I, knew, I know I'll get slammed. <laughs> Just doing our normal thinning just a little bit. Yeah, definitely the these fanatic paints they really benefit from being watered though or thinned, I think is the best way to put it. Um So, as Rich will remind me, it's even doubly important that I do the video on the medium. There you go, I said it for you. Um, I don't think I wore them down any more than I did the other ones, in fairness, because I, I used to thin them down quite a bit anyway. Um, but if you're using the idea, I do my videos where I um, keep dipping my brush into the medium and get just to keep it to the... Uh, thinnest level I like. That's that's important. But if you're using a wet palette that should do it, really. It's when you get these metallics. I like the metallic to be a little bit runny. They're always a bit thick, aren't they? That's because I'm painting over the grey and I want it to run into all the recesses. If you're going over a black, you might want to kind of do kind of a dry brush or an over brush. So you're just not going to need it so wet. But... Yes, I'll, what I'll do is... Um, to answer your question better, mini painter guy... Um, I'll get my ass in gear and do the video where I show you how to make the medium. Because what I was going to do in that video as well is is kind of put a not only how to make it, but how to use it, why to use it. So it's going to be a little bit longer than just a quick. But I can go into it a lot, a lot more detail, and you'll see how much there is. What day is it today? Well, it's Friday, so um, I might be able to do it on Sunday. Maybe. Possibly. So I've just um yeah, I'm in the middle of a well, I've just started a another commission for some Middle Earth stuff.
Is it the Beast of Morgoth? Not Morgoth. Um, Beast of oh, I can't remember. Big big rhino thing. But I keep saying it's a cow and wanting to go moo every time I see it. But it's like one of those big prehistoric dudes with the big one pointy horn on its nose. You know you know what it is, Rich. <laughs> Beast of Gorgoth. All right, Nick. Yeah, it's good. So if people say the things that change your painting, and I, I know um, using a wet palette is uh, a big change for a lot of people, but using that medium, I think just instantly changes the game. It's just so useful. I tried it against the new Army Painter um, Fanatics medium. And our medium is pretty much spot on. Um, which made me smile a lot. It's pretty much the uh, same. I think that's it really to be honest with mediums is um because they're all designed to do the same thing really so they're all going to be fairly similar Ace. I was thinking about doing it different bronzy caliber. I like the idea of these looking a little bit. We are going to make them a little bit different to each other, but have them a little bit uniform, if you know what I mean. They all use the same armor, the same. You know, you know the school. That just thought it'd be uh, interesting. That's what you got to do. You got to keep yourself interested. I realised um, when I was making that video earlier for this, cutting the spears that the the pliers with the nice cutter I had on I gave to my son to um, tighten up <laughs> tighten up stuff on his drum kit. So I found this really old antique pair that have been kicking around in the dad's toolbox, probably from my granddad and. Uh, yeah, that didn't go so well for cutting. <laughs> so I've ordered a new set on uh, the Amazon. Yeah, 50 plus year old uh, pliers don't cut these wire spears very well. In fairness, they do cut them, but not very well. That's it. The great beast of Gorgoroth. That's um, what I'm in the middle of at the moment. 
just got all the base colours down on the orc crew. It's quite a chunky bit of uh, resin. Let's grab him, he's just here. There he is. Boom. I'll show you. So he's not right up against the camera, so you can see how big he really is. So obviously, yeah, you can see better now. He looked massive in front of the camera, but it's quite nice. Some, is it fine cast stuff? And the orcs are just the... Uh, So Nick, did you use the PBO stuff? You did, didn't you? That's far as I remember. Okay, let's get some let's get all the metallics down. So we can use greedy gold. It's gone squeaky. At least it's on my knees. Okay. Let's just, there's a belt buckle back there. Let's knock that in. And I was just going to put some gold on their swords. So it's just a little bit different. I've had the uh, it's a bit warm in here today, so the window open. So, how's everyone been this week? Hobbying? Not got any belt buckle there. Just getting this metallic down nice and early so it's got plenty of time to dry. I'm mucking around with washes. There's nothing worse than hitting a little bit of metallic that's not it's quite dry. It goes everywhere. Okay. Next, we're going to grab oh, some dragon red. I oh, know, I do. We do one down. We're going to go for a woven fury. Oh, yes, you see, Galera. Yeah. Yeah. Make sure your water's um not tap water. Make sure you use I use the stuff out of the tumble dryer. First batch I made, I made the mistake of using uh, tap water. Of course, everything everything goes off and stinky very very quickly. So yeah. So I swap to my nice Vallejo brush and I'm just going to start laying down the red. Now this, this is very, 
kind of magenta -y this. I've not used this to blend up from before, so let's see how well it goes. Ah, evening, Ben. What goes it, shit, mate? What have you, what you're sticking to your hand today? Yeah, these are nice little ones for these, huh? I hate it when they when the sculptor does a uh, doesn't do enough <laughs> you do one off and one you don't know until you're there. What you can do is if it's like that you can do a double one at the back, but because I've miffed it up like that, I'm just gonna paint them all in red. Stupid dogs doing it. What are you doing? No, no. Lay down. Lay down. No, no. Sorry about that, everybody. down as the base layer. Gentry, that. that one. Which is quite cool. Oh, nice. The nice models are the mythic American ones. I like them a lot. So we'll just let that. Oh, I'm getting a visit from the dog now. It seems to have, it seems to have escaped. My, my wife's trying to capture him at the moment. <laughs> just shut the, shut the gate again if you, if you settle down to. No, I'll just put it back in. Oh. Sorry about that, guys. Oh, 50% off enough. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's seen. I was going to say, that's seen trouble with a lot of the wall or stuff, innit? They, um, fair play, they do try, try a lot of stuff and try and support a lot of stuff. But.
wasn't it? Some of the, uh, I suppose it's the, the way our hobby works, really. There's a lot. Probably one game that's a success, there's many that are failures. So I'm just hitting this with the Crusader speed paint as our wash. Yes, I I did like the. I was going to say the Aztec stuff. Aztec zombies. Is it on their main website, is it? Mr. Muncher. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just trying to ignore the dog being an idiot in the background of the room. Sorry if it hopefully it will settle down in a sec. He refused to go downstairs. Strange, isn't it? Strange hobby. Remember when um, the Walking Dead game got scrapped? Yes, I prefer the uh, metal. Let's grab this guy and start the uh, the red off on him. And it's quite magentary that. We shall trust in the triads, that's what we're doing here, we're just trying these out. Should that be metal? No. Cool. Right, let's start a blue one, shall we? Let's start with Triumphant Navy. some of this up just to have more of a play with the paints. See I'm watering that with the 
medium as you can see and uh, yeah what I was worried about when I saw the paint was that I wouldn't be able to water it down enough to make it um, transparent translucent I don't know which is the right <laughs> technical word there Opacity, isn't it? So let's put these around this way so we can. Let's do a different colour on each. Shall we make some extra work? So we've done like uh, that's red, blue. Let's do a green one then. I mean, let's start at the bottom green on that one. Angel green. Yeah, that, that resin, some. I know some of it paints up okay, and other it's like, it seems it, I don't know, if it's got porous or, and it's a little bit like painting bubble gum sometimes, isn't it? And other times you paint it and it's, uh, fine, it's, I don't know. See, this is good, good coverage. white one so let's start um, let's not start too grey let's, let's start with a worn stone do you know what Karen I was just gonna, I was just gonna say let's do this from purple because <laughs> Karen had like that and then bing <laughs> it's like a summoning spell I thought, no, I won't do it purple. It's just white and I'll do some purple trimming in a bit. So, yeah, this is the new brain matter day. Oh, no, one, one stone, sorry, which is the one down from the beige. his bed in a sec. Just put a little bit of flesh, still light there. Let's just uh, do a soft first layer of uh, going up to white anyway. So. moment <laughs> yeah. 
if you're going to eat your bed, I'm going to take it away. <laughs> well, there we go. It's not often you, you get to say that to someone, is it? Too worried I'll hit that area where the uh, strap is around his leg because obviously I can just go over the top of this white, it's not a problem. for white we're gonna do let's see gonna play with some layering in a minute once we've got these base colors down Minis to paint these ones kind of um, a nice segmented outlet, so it's a bit like uh, painting numbers. So, next, I'm going to use Carnelian Skin, very deep reddish brown, and I do like it for a leather. That's why I like these bottles being labelled the way they are. Because it gives you some chance of finding the colour you're looking for. Rather than thinking, uh, I need bootstrap brown. And then... Uh, giraffe hide. That'd be a good colour paint, wouldn't it? Hedgehog boil. That'd be a terrible name for a plane, would it? <laughs> you can see that's a really good. I do like the fact this uh, this set has got a lot of different browns. I'm a lazy painter. I don't. Um... Well, I did go for a stage of mixing all the paints myself, but when you've got a lot to paint, you really haven't got the time. And it's really it's an absolute absolute kind of boon to have them all on tap you know
<laughs> well, we we were talking about painting, weren't we? Um, work on fifty million. Well, we'll choose. Uh huh. I missed that, Ben. Fifteen mil, man. The slain set, uh, rock is. I know you said the resin, but they. I found they painted up really, really nicely. Um, Some of the swords were a little bit wobbly. But I don't really find that an issue with that really. You've got one or two ways to deal with it. You've got the resin way, which are a bit bendy, or you've got this way, which they will spike you and stick in your arm. Both have their drawbacks. <laughs> so for just a bit of speed it up, I'm just gonna add their main belt on the same colour. They obviously went to the same shop to buy all the pouches and leather. Yeah, I I I enjoyed painting them. In fairness, um, they, uh, I'd refer them if they'd have been in metal, you know. Okay, so what I've done now is that same colour I'm using, but I've watered it right out. make it look different i'll show you what i mean on camera but i'll bring it close to the camera so yeah i've used the medium to really get it as thin as i possibly can because i want its boots to look different but i wanted that ready ox look to me now. So I'm not going for complete coverage with that. In fact, I don't want it to cover, I want it to. So, if you look on his belt, that's full coverage. And as you see on his boots, the undercoat is showing through. Okay. Which models are they? Um is that the like the alternative iron ones? I start collecting those and then I collect all the old ones and I found you can still buy the new <laughs> buy them new. <laughs> oh me, eh? Okay, so whilst we waiting for that to dry, I'm gonna get some dark tone. Okay, cool. Because the alternative armies did all the Fomorians, didn't they? And stuff. So I've got those as well. Haha. <laughs> I 
you know, just not watering down as much as the. I'm just I'm getting a brush at a time, dipping it into the wash. So I can just keep it running into all the divots. And you always add a little bit of more pure over the top of the wet area. And you find that it runs in there nicely. And you want a bit darker, just move the wash around on the miniature until you're happy. No, I haven't painted the... I've often looked at them. I've got some similar stuff. Uh, what's it called? Oh, what did they do? They did the Weird Sisters. Is that the same range? No, no, that's um, Tin Soldier in it. Um, what's it called? Oh. They have the Tin Soldier model company in it. They do the uh, ones that remind me of those. But no, they're cool, didn't they? Those burrows and badges. All right. Okay. Again, on that armor, I want the black to be a bit stronger. So I've not gone in with my medium brush, I've just had that pure wash. There we go. I've often looked at them, Ben, they do look cool. I've got a special weakness for black scorpion miniatures as well. Especially the pirate range. Although I did enjoy painting the dwarf uh, riding a snail. I don't know if you guys saw that. That was um, a wicked miniature. When I put it up on uh, X, somebody messaged me and uh, accused, oh, not accused, but thought I was cruel for actually sticking a snail shell to the base because the, the, the sculpting was that good on it. When I painted it, it looked like a real snail. There's a lot of nice stuff out there in there for us to we're so lucky. Makes you wonder where the hobby's gonna go, isn't it? Is it gonna is the 3D printing gonna eventually make it worse or better? Are they gonna 3D print in colour? 
I've seen some of them already. That mean we're gonna lose paint into the hobby? Don't know. I suppose it's how long we all live for, isn't it? <laughs> I was just thinking, it's like if, if you can't find a miniature out there, generally somebody's got it on a 3D or can you know, knock a 3D sculpt up for you. Whereas before we had all the uh, cost of. <laughs> have the cost of obviously if you wanted something out to have it sculpted then production molds made etc 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 now for a one-off thing just get that uh, 3d sculpt thing can't you so, who knows where that's gonna end up who knows Dusty skull. Look back to my little brush. I'm just gonna lay this on to this guy's trues. Again, I've made that really thin. You see now his boots have dried. Um, all that thin paint's really worked for us. Lacing. I don't know. It's pretty really technical word for it. So did you stick many of the 15 mil miniatures to your hands, Ben? You've not had tales of uh, your gluey exploits for a little while. On it, it almost become a, it almost become a feature on the uh, Friday night paint along. What's Ben glued to himself today? <laughs> There was a book I read uh, while I was at school, um, The Secret Diary of Adrian Mole, age 13 and a quarter or something like that. I think it was by Sue, Sue Townsend, maybe. 
my memory calls. They played a TV program for it as well. But there's a chapter in the book where he actually glues a spitfire to his face because he's trying to have an experimental glue sniff. <laughs> he's, he glues a spitfire to his face. Ah, well done. <laughs> so if you stuck a Victorian building to yourself, were you an, were you an annex? <laughs> were, you a, were you an extension? <laughs> oh. oh, how we laugh. <laughs> I think he's gonna have the same tr trues as well. Oh, actually, better not. Oh no, we're gonna go up to white on his. Thing, so. I've noticed with um, all these nice browns and fawns and stuff to play with, you can go quite close. You know what I mean? So. I would have never put light leggings next to a light top before. Because you just don't have that good a contrast. So everything looks the same. So, but these new extra kind of, so we've got a double amount of paint in each color. You can really, uh, Experiment by putting the same. It's a bit like when I did the priest the other week. So it was like mostly brown. But there were so many different browns in it, it just works. And the same's going to happen. So yeah, it's, it's quite cool. So we're going with this sort of fawn, deep fawny brown colour. And there's no question it's going to be look different than the uh, the white when we do it. So that's cool. So that's cool. Let's find a different brown. Let's go for a bootstrap brown. <laughs> I think I said that earlier. There actually one called Bootstrap Brown, it's a deep brown. I think one thing I'm going to have to work hard on is not put so much paint out. Because I noticed you just need little tiny amounts of this because it waters down so much. So we did, we're an hour in. We have an hour in update, and we what we've, uh, how far we've got on these minis. Well, as you can see, we've got most of the base colours now. These miniatures come with the. I've not glued the shields on, they actually molded that way. I'm keeping that boot strap brown, nice and thin. Yeah. 
it just if you keep it thin with the matte medium it really dries proper matte you know Need that nice centerful undercoat it gives a real head start on the uh, next level shading I might use this for the back of the shields because it's a really good brown so we wore it down So I had a fun, uh, well, I finished um, a load of miniatures for someone and I'd based them wrong. Well, there was a bit of a, a crossed, um, crossed lines and anyway, they were on the wrong bases. There was a mix up, so to then take all of them back off the bases and rebase them which is always a nightmare I'll give you a clue Rich they were sword point miniatures <laughs> As you can imagine. Okay, so that's down. I'm gonna go for Is it that one? Yeah. Wasteland clay. That's similar to the brown that I used to use for the spears. Yellowy brown, but it's not quite as yellowy. Easing a bit of medium into that. Good because I'm going to drop a little bit of wash over that in a minute. I just want a nice, nice coat like that. I don't know about this colour, but it seems to always cover better when it's watered down. Strange that. If you try and use that too thick, it just doesn't cover it, just don't work. Okay. 
Oh, we had a find of the week. Da, 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 da. <laughs> I'll show you in a sec. Oh, yeah. I will show you once I paint this spear. I've wound up again, it was quiet a minute ago. Forget how young he's still only a year old. my find of the week so there was I hurtling around on Amazon as I do and I found this da, 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 da. it only blows cool air it says it's a mini air conditioning fan but you can also Do that. It only blows cool air, but so it doesn't dry them as quick as a hair dryer. But it was five pounds. It does work. They're sold on Amazon. They're sold on Amazon as eyelash glue. <laughs> I don't know why it's suggested, but yeah, but they're fiber and it's USB chargeable. Have a look, and all those spears are dry now. Pretty much, it's a little bit well melted, but yeah, it does work. Because I I was wondering if it's the heat of something that sets the paint, or just the air moving around them. And apparently, it's a mixture of both. Hot air will do it quicker, but sometimes that buggers the paints up as well. And I noticed that one doesn't isn't powerful enough like a hairdryer, so if it's a wash, it doesn't blow it around, which is quite cool. And if it gets too hot, I'm going to point it at me. Okay, so we're gonna, talking of washes, let's get some. Uh, Now let's not go with the washes on those. Let's get Dragon Red, which is the next red up from Wyvern Fury, which is magenta. I wonder what it says on the thing. Deep purplish red, yeah, magenta. This one is vivid purplish red. Mm, I don't know about that. So. I'm not sure of the new pure red. I like the old pure red over that abomination gore. And I've not really found a replacement yet, but this is the dragon red and we're just gonna start catching the highlights. So we're looking for the raised areas. And the edge of the is tabard where it's out in the daylight. So we're doing the top and the high parts. Medium right underneath. So we're not going to write up underneath that chainmail. We're not going to close snug into the shield. I just see a little bit of his hand there. Let's drop a little bit of a 
wonder if you can do it on the back can on the others as well. Nope. Nope. Yes. That's strange. Let's use that dragon red again. Now we're going to hit the top edge. But we're not going to go into the grooves. Hit the edges of that. It does actually work quite nicely with that purple. that be dry enough now so we'll just put a little bit of medium in that red and just strengthen the areas we've already done Next we'll do, we'll do that green or the blue. So green we did angel. So next one up here is guardian. Deep green. You could miss one out and go up to the next one, but hey. Some of them work like that, some of them don't. Some of it's too much of a big step. But it's nice jumping around in between them sometimes as well. So. so a bit of medium in there and again just hitting those high areas and the bits that are really in the in the light as it were. So we're leaving that original green as our shadowy green. These two work nice together. Look at that. Oh, well, you can see it on that light. Quite blue we used. Trump from Navy. So we're going to go up to Gothic. Which is deep purplish blue. Ah, Karen will be pleased. It's a it's a purplish blue. Rich, guess what? <gasps> da da da. Getting quite rare now in <laughs> in the paint pots. I think I've used quite a few. Again, we're just going up with those high areas. Around the edges. With the white, we're gonna go to Brain Matter Beige. So that first one was a dark stone or something, wasn't it? I don't think it's gonna be a lot, a one stone. 
It doesn't look in the bottle like it's going to be much difference, but this is a bit of a surprise, this one. Hope you can see this on camera. Okay. I don't think you are, it's glowing off too much. You can certainly see it. It might show up better on his plate there. Sorry, tabard. So, get a bit of a shadow on it. There we go. That's your beige going on. It's kind of showing up. If I get a little bit of shadow on it, there we go. You'll certainly see on the photographs. Okay. Right, let's go up to pure red. Check. A bit of medium in there. If you're not using medium and you've got a wet palette, I'd advise you to put the paints out early and just let them let the paint palette do its job. Because that does work, because if you leave these overnight on the palette, they do work really well the next day. So I'm just looking for the high areas and just highlighting those highlights. Touching the brush onto the edge of that, just sort of feathering it onto the edge there. Okay, so again, we just want the highest, the highlights of this. So it's in those edges that are facing right up to the top. Edge of there. So next we want quite a dark brown. Let's go for obsidian skin. Uh, no, let's go for brigadine brown. What we can do with that? We're gonna send this armor. Has got. Some nice edging on it. I'm just gonna put a bit of medium on it. There we go. Which would be nice to have like a brown edge into it. Thank you. 
Nice enough. Neat. Keep a bit of medium in your brush. Your brush is nice and damp. That way your paint will flow off nicely. There we go. Nice and neat. One in there, look. I think the same on this guy. Just load up your brush. Should be damp enough now because it's been on the wet palette a bit. Just a little bit more. There we go. Oh dear, that's next door neighbours. Kids are having a in the dark bounce on their trampoline. They get much louder when I shut the window. Or go throw stuff at them. One of the two. Always goes nice and quiet. Me talking always when uh, I'm painting straight lines. There we go. I'll just do the uh, run around his collar. Can that one, so we're just hello, Mr. Go for it. How are we doing? You still going for it? Welcome aboard, shipmate. this dark brown there's some kind of leg tie things going on around there so I'll just drop that on there So just grab some off the wet palette. Let's nick a bit in there. And that darker brown of Mr. Over his shoulder. That's another beautiful from the wet palette going. If you've missed a bit, the paint's still there for you. Move the dog back down the room again.
Oh dear. Back again. Sorry about that shit, mate. He's been quite a distraction tonight. Ah, oh dear. Where was I? Okay, we'll grab a bit of black. Just hit some of those scabbards here. Quite thin the matte back they got. It's quite cool. It's almost like a contrast paint, which I do anyway when I mix my own black up. Okay. Scabbards in the black. You can have a black moustache as well. Keep it. Even that black thinned out. So some of that grey will show through. There we go. Into the same armourer, and he had a deal on black scabbards. Now, yeah, I paid a few Carolagian Frank um, Saga armies, or warbands. Never used one though, I don't know. The mounted warlords are cracking miniature. There's um, their hero of legend as well, uh, Roland the Magnificent or something, something like that. Don't quote me on that. <laughs> okay, so next for the greens, we've done angel green, we've done guardian green. We're going to go up to green skin which is like the orc flesh one which is not great orc flesh really thin that through again we're just going to touch the highlights in that brush so paint lots of little lines that looks cool along the edge I'm 
Mm, yeah. And I believe the blue, we were up to a perfectly blue, weren't we? We've done Triumphant Navy. So the next one is Ultramarine Blue. Well, I never. Just goes to prove that this purplish blue, strong purplish blue, <laughs> the word ultramarine cannot be copyrighted, obviously. So I should imagine somebody would have. So. Again, we're just going to hit the high bits. Okay, we're going to shut the window in a sec. Just do this kind of. Okay. So it's a green, red, and blue. So next is our. Whites, I'm gonna go to matte white. Obviously, it's gonna be our highest white highlight. We're just gonna be really careful with this, otherwise. We might have just painted all white. So I'm just gonna run it along the edges and the very highest bit. If you're not sure when you're doing this sort of work, when you're if you thin out. It, it helps your blends go smoother. If you're naturally letting the uh, colour underneath go through. And B, if you're not sure, you can always add more. Whereas if you put too much on, you've got to go back, start again, and, and to and fro it. Which is the way that the top painters do it. They they will to and fro all day until they get the right tones in the right places. But mere mortals like us, we want to get the miniature finished. <laughs> so, well, next we're going to paint the eyeballs. So, I'm going to get my psycho brush. Psycho. Hand against the bench. In the medium, load the brush up, lock everything off. There we go. Same again. Left hand, lock right hand on. And just strengthen those eyeballs again. There we go. Mm-hmm. 
don't force it. If you're coming in from one side and that nose is in the way or something's in the way, don't just try and force it, just move the miniature. I was thinking what I was going to say next, and I painted his nose white. There we go. Just wet the brush carefully, and then just wash it off. Okay, let's let that dry a sec. And whilst that's doing, we're going to have a look at what shield colours we're going to get. Right. So let's use that blue on one because that's a good colour. Let's grab a ordinary brush. Uh, now you should have a red shield, shouldn't you? Let's go for a blue shield again. Um, let's water that dark blue down. Some more medium in it. It's pretty thin and it's still giving us good coverage. I don't want it to look too solid if you know what I mean I want it to be a bit washed out okay let's start with his red let's go straight for the dragon Darken this down with a wash in a minute. Mm. A bit of red on the white, let's get it off. There we go. That's because I've made the U. Red really watery, and I wasn't being very careful with it, and it's flicking off the brush a little bit. Went on the metal there, but I'm not worried about that because we're gonna highlight the metal in a minute. Start with a red base on another one as well. Might start with red on all of them and the rest. See where it's a bit watery? It's just run onto his hand then. We don't want it on his hand. There we go. That's some of the design of the miniature where it's uh, stuck in the lids. Leave that alone for a minute. Let it dry off a bit. And we can go back. Don't be too keen to sort out 
get the paint off where you need to and then leave it for a minute, let it all dry and calm down a bit and then go back and sort it out. So that's a bit drier in there, we can just be very careful, just sort it out, there we go. mix some of that red in with the darker red see what happens there we go so got more of a sort of slightly darker purpley red going on We're very quiet tonight, guys. Or I've switched the comments off. If I have, just type a comment saying you switched the comments off. <laughs> Wash there dry. So I'll brush wash properly. Go back to our psycho brush. And we're going to put those black dots in their eyes that we love to do. I was on my own, Rich. <laughs> it's tricky sometimes you've you um having a one way conversation it's uh really quite strange. find out try and find out what that does there's a, a thing where you can invite someone to co-host it so i'll have to have a play around with that i have to do a kits with karen pirate day or something we'll get those pesky garage goblins going <laughs> i'll get rich to do this do the stato <laughs> Do the stato roll. Okay. Let's let's get on. Let's get this on. So we're gonna go for um, let's go for paratrooper tan. This is what I was saying about having lots of different browns. You can just water that 
down look it looks a bit light for his shoes but when we put a wash over that that'll be cool let's have a look is that gonna be uh, this is a slightly darker brown for that yes yeah, use that dark one there so once they're out on the palette as well it's beautiful because you can just oh yeah I'll have a word with uh, Darren so if he's gonna stock the new Fanatic so I know he's got um, orders in with them I think he's gonna have to stock the wet palettes as well Faces on these are really good. We haven't done any more work on them yet. So I think we do that dark brown on his leg ties as well. It's a good colour for them. Just keep that brush a little bit moist. Don't overload it. Keep neat and tidy. There we go. The neater and tidier you are, the less time you have to waste tidying up. Be close around the bottom of that shield. There we go. I do, they've kind of grown on me, these miniatures. Anybody play Carolidium Franks? Let's know in the comments. <laughs> so that one's done. Leggings wise. That one is as well. Is that something else? Put a brow on that. He needs slightly darker trues because he's got lighter leggings. Do we want to find... Do you know the elven flesh we found? That yellowy... Um, I think they dropped it out of the paints. After we, after we found it, they dropped it. Which is typical, isn't it? Different brown. I 
I was trying to remember, um, I'm sure this fur brown is a reddish brown, but it's quite high up the uh, tones. I'm sure I played against against them. I'm sure it was uh I'm just trying to remember what it would have been. gone. Yes, I, was, I tried to recall but it's gone. I kind of want to say Normans but mm, that's a bit obvious isn't it? I'm sure the the uh, hero is Roland, Roland the Brave, Roland the Magnificent, or something like that. I've painted him. He's a uh, great miniature. He's got his foot up on a shield and blowing a horn. Let's also remember the uh, Ward Ward as well. His horse. Hmm. It's, got, um, it's just moist enough to be flown off the brush nicely, so but not that it's going everywhere, which is nice about these paints. You can really balance that. Yeah, I've just seen uh, the subscribers are creeping up again, aren't they, Rich? Nine, I think we're on 20 or something like that. So nearly that big foul. So let's quickly put a red or oh, I think there's a dark red. Dark red tone. I've not tried that one. Let's try that one. Switch. <laughs> Pretty sure it's that one. Now, usually, you wouldn't put a wash on a flat area because it goes like uh, coffee stains. But it's kind of what I want for the shield. A 
if you know something's going to do it, do something, and you want to use it to your advantage, that's, I think that's what it's all about. So this wash will gather at the bottom of the shelves. As Rich said, 75 more subs and we hit that magic thou. And I know Griffin Beast want to um, help me celebrate that. So I'm not sure what we're going to do. Or if it's going to be a bit of something cool. A few ideas are being kicked about. <laughs> I'm sure they'll support Because they've supported me from the start, really. Yeah, all these miniatures, the fact that they've added me to their website, and they really want this channel to keep growing, and it gives them a really good contact for, like the spear thing earlier, somebody asked them how to do the spears, so they give me, they asked me yesterday, could I do a, a vid, and a vid is done. And we do that, so I think it's good that they're supporting it. Call me biased if you like. <laughs> Right, so as you see it's gathering at the bottom, while it's still wet, I'm just gonna wick it away a bit. We don't want a massive puddle there, we want it a little bit. There we go. But you can see how it's tea staining up a bit. This is with my little machine coming handy. Deploy eyelash dryer. Thunderbird 4. It kind of looks like a Pokemon thing, doesn't it? It's not strong enough to blow the medium around. You can see it drying up. Look at that. It's been touching these others as well. Look. Yeah. My word. It does work, I say, using the hairdryer is quicker, but it pushes the wash around. This doesn't. There we go. It's not too noisy. And it's pink. Yes. Yes, they certainly are. It just takes it down those few... It just fills it down, so... Okay, while they're finished drying, we're going to get our barbarian flesh. Just remember, we used agate skin, didn't we? So we've used agate skin and we've used crusader flesh. Now we're going to just nip a little cheeky highlight in there. Let's get some more medium in there. I'm just gonna oh, that's quite a bit in there. There we go. So it's nose, chin, cheeks, maybe a little bit on the jawline. 
nose, chin, cheeks. He's got a grumpy face. He's like a school teacher face. It's like the grumpy school teacher we all had. This guy looks quite. Uh, is he surprised? Do you think? Bit of the highlight. I've got their hands. We'll do their faces first, then we go back and do all the hands. So we do it on top of his hand there, across his knuckles. And each individual knuckle. So go down. There we go. That reddish brown wheel looks, looks a bit fleshy, doesn't it? That's right, we'll be alright, we'll put gonna get some tone on that at that moment. Just across the top of the hand there, with his knuckles. Okay. A bit of nub behind the shell. Boom, boom. How are we doing on time? Wow, two hours. That flew by, didn't it? Yeah, so everyone goes, no, you won't shut up. He had, a, he had a comment on one of the videos that was um, saying he, he liked the fact that I showed kind of the whole of the painting because when I first started doing the videos I, I would start and stop it, I'd right, come back in a minute and show you what I've done and uh, it got me thinking about doing videos like that again or whether I should just do more just straight through paint the miniature as long as it takes and then people can jump around and then do really short ones doing like a different technique I think that might be the way to to do it okay so it's not bad two hours where we are at the moment is it So what we do now is we're going to pop a soft tone wash over all these brands. I've been using this soft tone a lot uh, out of the new ones. I never used to use it very much, but. It's quite good, so we're just going to drop it anywhere we want to. So, on those light browns we're looking for, be careful around the the whites, obviously, because if you go onto them, you're going to be highlighting them back out again because it'll look like somebody spilled coffee everywhere. Yeah, the the wash I think they are missing um, is the flesh wash. They've got two flesh washes in the range now. Um, I think one's just flesh wash, one's dark flesh wash. Now, they look to me like they're based with like a dark brown. And it does work. If you like it, I'm not particularly keen, and I think that's that is a personal preference on that one. 
There's nothing wrong with the bushes. I'm just not very keen on them. So I've got a bottle of the old flesh wash. And I've mixed myself up a... Because I had an empty bottle of Agrax. Uh, sorry, Reichland. So I mixed uh, a flesh... I've got an old army paint flesh wash. And I've mixed it up in there. Um, you got to do what you got to do. If, if you don't go on with something, you've got to get something else, in you? Not gonna get, I'm not going to slag the whole range off because of uh, one thing doesn't quite work for me. But saying that, the dark red works for it anyway. It's just... Um, not quite as good as having the flesh. Perhaps it's just a label on it. Perhaps I've just been conned by my own uh, thing. I think that's a lot of it. I think that's why the labeling works so well on the new ones. A bit like our um, elven flesh for the Roman tabards. If it had been called Roman tabards, we'd have all discovered it straight away. I'm just going to run some of this around the edge of that chain mill. There we go. The there's a uh, oh, brilliant. There's a brilliant couple of washes. Though. Um, there's a two. I like. Want to say there's a rust one. Rust tone, it's brilliant. Love it a lot. And also their blood one. And it's not used as much as um, the GW Blood for a Blood God. It was so much better than the army paint of blood. But now. Their new one is on par, I think. And it's in a dropper bottle, which is quite handy. Well, I don't mind things being in a pot, but stuff like that is really good in a dropper bottle. soft brown all over because they're quite bright so I didn't mind that because I knew I was going to put a tone over them that's uh oh, what's his name oh god it says paint to 11 next level painting that's a good guy paint it to 11 then pull it back to 10 I like that. Did I do that with a spear? We're checking a second. I think, yes, I did. You'll find doing the spear, you generally get a blob of it on the end or by his knuckles there, look. So just before it dries completely, get in there, sort it out. You can put it somewhere else, you know what I mean? Fool your brush, move it around the model. Work it away from there, from there. A bit more there. So in that fawny coloured down the bottom of his leggings, doesn't matter if there's a bit of dirt on there. They're still in a pile of mud. For heaven's sake. <laughs> So 
the next we need to do um, let's see what's one of these up here light reddish brown ready umber I'm not sure if this has been used it has That's not what I thought it was going to be. It's a real flesh tone, that one. Ooh. It's almost like old barbarian flesh. Interesting. <laughs> it's like a voyage of discovery. Let's use... Uh, I was looking for a good brown for their moustaches. Let's go for, let's use leather brown. Let's put that soft tone back. Yeah, well, as well with the, the paints, I bought some uh, different racks for them. Um, these are the racks for nail varnish. Uh, the Perspex ones, but I notice they do some that are six tiers. And I thought there's six in the triads. Oh my god, I can have all the triads lined up, and that's what I did. So, <laughs> they're all beautifully in lines, as you can see, and then they get up their six. Okay. Look at his face, that's all. a wicked, wicked sculpt, isn't it? As we're getting to the bit where we're doing the fancy pants stuff. To the fancy pants stuff, all the basic -y stuff is done. So technically, they're finished. Technically, apart from the gold, which we're going to use our flesh wash <laughs> army painter, army painter in a pot. I wanted to water it down, so I thought I'd just chuck it all in one pot. So I put, um, that's what I had left of uh, flesh tone, plus a, oh no it wasn't, yeah it was, that was what I had left of the flesh tone, mixed with some medium. I think the old paint's going to be around for a while anyway. And again, when the new ones are all released, you'll, uh, have people clearing them out so you can grab your favourite colours that way as well I suppose there we go beautiful right well that's all drying off let's get the bases done so let's use Use that brown there. What's that stone, that warm stone? And just dry brush some of that over our base. There we go.
Okay, so. That's cool. Right. So next, let's have a go some shields. Now, I've been copying the uh, picture on the Gripping Beast website, and they've got the little big man shield stickers on it, so we're going to use them as uh, references. Brush-wise, what I'm going to use is... Uh, like these. These are uh, nail art brushes. If you see them cheap enough on Amazon or somewhere, grab yourself some. They're really good for freehand. watering down that white okay so let's see there's a They're quite good for doing freehand with, because they're for pulling lines, basically. When you're doing dots, I have plenty of paint in there, and you just want to gently touch down. So you've almost got too much paint in your brush, but you gotta be so gentle just to Okay, so next, if excuse me if I Excuse me if I go off screen as well. It's very hard to. Track both at the same time. There's a couple of ways to look at these shields. It's like um, 
if you look at the circles slightly out, but the shield's slightly out as well. And in reality, this is probably more realistic than the transfer because they wouldn't be perfect. This is where our rival will come in and say, oh, well, that's wrong. So it's up to you. <laughs> you can, I think the transfers look great as well. I'm not there. He does a really good job. There's little big man shield transfers at Ace. My favourite transfers. What you can do now, while it's dry, is come back in with the red. Just tidy it up a little bit. So these areas where it's slightly out, just round it up slightly, just keep that red light in your brush. I'm not going to worry too much about it. For the aforementioned reasons. There we go. From a distance, that's fine. I want you, why I put that blue one, I'm going to get Jim Wannick yellow. And we're going to thin it down a bit. Cheers, Rich. Yeah, I, I see. I like, I like the transfers. <laughs> A good friend of mine said the uh, heraldry was invented when the first barbarian ripped the head off a chicken and squirted the insides onto a shield and went rah and charged into battle. And I love that that picture. So we see this Hollywood uh, image of perfect shields. There was going to be some, like in life, there's obviously some people that are going to paint shields better. If you've got a squire that's good at painting shields, he's going to, you can have some nice shields. But if you've got one that's not very good, you can have some crap shields. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. I think that's, uh, well, I've kind of got to say on that. <laughs> so now we're going to. Get that dark green. Yeah, dark green. I'm going to quarter that. So please, Mr. Little Big Man Shields, I'm sorry for copying your uh, transfers. I love them. Have you seen I've done a video on how to put them on for people. <laughs> so it's, I know I'm copying them at the moment, but please don't get cross with me. I think we've got about five or six of these brushes. They're all different lengths, but of course they're just. Um, I think they're about five or six quid for the set. 
And if you only use it for stuff like this, they've lasted quite a while. Don't let my wifey know that I've got nail varnish brushes. She want me to paint her nails with all fancy designs. She'll only ask me once though because I paint like shield designs on them. <laughs> she went like that. Okay, let's leave that green to dry. This is where I should have a little blower going. Right, let's go with... Oh, that's quite a tricky one. Let's quart that one black first. Let's, let's quarter it red. Dark red. So I'm trying to copy one on the on the screen over by my left. So bear with me, there's a bit you'll see why I'm trying to work out which way to go with this. Right, let's quarter this one blue. Let's use that lighter blue. Again, you'll find that if you're going to get some of these brushes, they they don't hold a lot of paint, which, in fairness, is a good thing. Just like there, obviously, you've got too much paint on board. Not less than that, but I know one of the comments, one of the reviews, sorry, on these. Was it they don't hold a lot of paint or don't hold a lot of varnish, lacquer. Well, that's a good thing. Because we're not going to blob it all around, are we? We only want a little bit at a time. It's more important how it runs than how much is on there. I'm keeping that medium in that brush because I don't want it drying out. It's a very thin brush. I don't want it clogging up and getting all gloopy. Ooh, sort of blue. Doesn't really matter. Those two blues next to each other are very. They're both the highlights of the light of the one we used earlier. Actually, if we mix them up actually it will be like we're wet blending which is cool that's something else that's easier with these if you put a bit of medium in them they actually stay wet for a little bit longer than the old ones did so you can technically wet blend quite easily That's your bag, then you get some really, then you start getting some real smooth blends. All right, next. It's going to be tricky.
if you're going for a, a weird shape, you give yourself some marker dots to aim for. You see those little white dots I've given myself there. So I want to go and keeping that white thin and watery. Doesn't matter if you make a little mistake because wherever we're going quite light we can zoom paint over that. It's almost like sketching out. It's a bit weird at the moment, don't panic. And we're going to do a second pass. It's really strength for now. Lines you want to keep. I'm not worrying a bit about going out and over because you'll see in a minute why I'm not worried. So I want to bring that in a little bit, that one. Lines are getting stronger. You let that dry a sec. And then we're gonna give ourselves some guide dots again. Okay, and we're gonna move the brush up. brush starts getting claggy don't force it wash it through so we're using very thin white there so I want that so we're just sketching it out remember these aren't, these aren't our permanent lines yet So 
So put that one down there, let it dry. And go back to this one, and we're going to shape those white ones again. They look messy, don't panic. I have a plan. About getting everything leveled up. Getting there. Mm. Looks a bit weird at the moment, but don't pack. This is, you've got to have faith and keep going. So now I can follow these lines now. And put a bit more bend in them. in those lines don't try and push lines always pull the line that's what sign writers do it, basically these are like sign writer brushes in miniature sign writers awesome Just taking the edges out we had. If the paints are flowing, keep on going. Okay, we're not worried about making them too thick. We're looking for the right shape. Now, I wasn't worried about the shape because that middle bit's going to be black. So just nibble away at the inside of that white. Let's keep going. Keep in faith. It's good if you can get a reference picture. And have the reference picture on your painting desk. You can keep looking back and forth. Usually I'd, I'd have it on my phone on the desk. Making sure it's going all level. This is the beauty of having the wet palette. Go back in with the green. I'm just come the other side of that. Magically, our mistakes are disappearing. I 
don't try and start right on the line start away from it and work towards where you want to be there you go Red. Again, it'll be slightly out to the red that's there because you put a wash on it, but that's just going to make the shield look more interesting because it looks like you've it's been highlighted. So that works for us. There we go. That black's dry now. So go back into our white. That's up to you, whether that's tidy enough for you or not tidy enough for you. I think from that sort of distance, I think it's well tidy enough. Let's just back at this one now. We're gonna, uh, yeah, I think that's tidy enough. Oh, a little bit more over this side, I think. A little bit stronger. I thought I'd hang around tonight and because usually I do all this freehand work on Saturday morning before I do the photographs. And I thought you guys might be interested in uh, seeing what I do. Since the end of the process this is the bit we kind of miss off. bit of more red in there. These are fun little brushes, they're just like holding a nice little pencil. It's going to be red up here as well. Red flowing. Let's use this color to shape that white line. Okay. Wash 
shine through. Next, black. careful not to overload your brush even when you're doing this bit it's very easy to get too much paint going everywhere line go with it I'll try not to go with the edge because I want if I can leave the other color it's gonna make it look even cooler If I'd gone over the edge too much, I'd have just painted that whole section black. Let's go and grab some of that blue. Always amazes me just feeling that just that little tiny bit just a massive difference. Can you just work around this? This is where you can get really fussy if you want to. Okay, there, got a yellowy bit. This paint is that good. You can do yellow dots on black. How was that? How was that? Grab you. How was those apples? <laughs> White ones over here. There we go. That's his shield done. Where's the lid? Ah, there's the lid. Always any small brushes you use, 
I'll just keep a lid on him. Paint. The victory lap in. And I think we're done for tonight. Here we go. Victory lap. The black spot. Just do this, and then we'll have a, a double check over them on camera. I think we're oh three hours. Wow, that was mucking around with the shields. <laughs> well, it's not bad, is it? Three hours. the tufts and their lacquer. I won't do the It's the journey rich, that's what it's about. Don't know if that helps in that comment. <laughs> it doesn't matter how we get there. I don't know. A stitch in time kills a cat. I don't know. Um, it's worth four in a bush. <laughs> pick, pick. <the laughs> Any of those will do. Um, let's see. Oh, bloody hell. I'll tell you what we haven't done. Okay, here we go. Let's have a look. With his wobbly shield. Brilliant faces. Really good faces on these. think then guys so if you're watching this thank you for watching um, help us get to a thousand subscribers if you can that'd be great if you've not already subscribed if you have already subscribed thank you very much um, I hope you enjoyed that guys and I think We'll call it quits there. Um, was, there was something else I was going to say. Um, no, I think that's it. Oh, yeah, watch out for the little short videos I'll be doing on different subjects. So there's those to watch out for. And feel free to share them and what have you. Tag people in them. I don't know what you can do, but any of that lot. Cheers, Rich. Okay, guys, well, thank you very much for joining me. I think three hours of me mumbling on is probably enough for anybody. I hope you enjoyed the Carolidian Franks. They are a great-looking bunch. So I've done the war bands for people, and some they're all cloaks and uh, horses and all that fancy pants stuff. So they look really good painted up on the table. Have a look at them. Why not? And uh, have a great weekend, guys. And see you again soon. Thanks for joining me. Bye now, shipmates.